Welcome to another session of Domains 21. I'm Jim from Reclaim Hosting, and it's a distinct pleasure to hand over, or how would I say, turn over the floor to Ruslan of Jelastic and Tim Owens, who I know quite well of Reclaim Hosting, to talk a little bit about our partnership together over the last several months. Awesome to get together with you, Ruslan. It's good to have a conversation. I don't know that we've ever had a, a private one-on-one -on -one chat, but it's great to talk with you. <laughs> Hello, Tim. Yeah, definitely. It's a pleasure for me to be invited and talk about our cooperation and maybe about future plans, like and share our plans with audience. So you all recently celebrated a birthday, if I'm correct. And you're almost as I think you're about the same age as Reclaim Hosting. Tell me a little bit like how old are you all like how did tell me a little bit about the history of the company, I guess, is a good way to get started. Yeah, so I have long history and short one. I will try to do like in the middle something. You know? yeah. <laughs> so the um, history started as usual, you know, like we, I was a developer, like, you know, normal developer. I was doing server side and back, back side, by the way. And uh, at some point, um, I realized, um, actually 10 years ago, there, is, there are not so many tools that can help me to fight this, like, uh, infrastructure and uh, speed up my work on infrastructure side. So we decided to build our own platform as usually developers do, you know, like they try to come up with new tools, right. like, you know, and uh, we started to build solution, um, which actually today people call backend as a service, backend as a service. So we built like APIs and at the end, uh, when we got like first workable solution, it helped me a lot. Like, so I, I, I became much more productive. I started to build faster like websites like and like applications for my customers i was working like a freelancer let's say and uh, literally it's speeded up significantly my work uh, and i realized okay there is a power behind it then we tried to show this to people and we got to about five thousand signups which was a good number let's say trials like and people said okay it's nice but it was the beginning of the story let's say so with backend as a service Later, after we got attention from investors, actually they found us uh, at some conference. We had like uh, right word like in our presentation, cloud platform, like you know, like, cloud, cloud, <laughs> and yeah, they yeah, yeah, yeah. they started Buzzwords. to ask more, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they started to ask more question, but honestly, they did not really understand like what we did. Like we had like long uh, meetings with technical engineers. It was hard to explain what we do because at that time. People did not have this term like backend as a service, you know. And but finally they decided, okay, like there are three guys, they build something cool, like let's let's invest them, we believe in them. And um, they put uh, money and they put uh, support from their portfolio teams, let's say, like uh, technologies. Uh, but during the, our, um, let's say, conversation with investors and they opened um, doors to um, hosting service providers. Uh, I visited many service providers and started to ask, like, okay, what is the problem? Like, um, you know, how we can help? And you know what happened? Like, we realized that what we built is not going to fly. Uh, because, so, uh, and the developers uh, had to write for our APIs. And, like, at, the, at that time, like, you know, it was no way, like, for companies to build for proprietary API. Or even if we go open source, like, nobody knows you. It was too dangerous. Like, so we decided, honestly, to scale down to platform as a service. <laughs> so, and we started to work on containers because it was another problem as well. It, it was a, another way to solve similar problem. Like, so we, we, we decided because I was working in another startup and like we had the system admin guy. He was a great guy, but he was not so experienced even like the system admin guy, how to build, let's say, haveability, how to build scalability and how to move from development to production. Like, you know, like we push the changes directly to production, which is bad habit. Like, you know, you, you should I'm not guilty. do it. I'm guilty of it too. <laughs> it's fine. Exactly. <laughs> you know, you know, uploading from, through FTP, you know, like all, all, all what people do uh, usually in the old um, days. So we decided, okay, like uh, let's build um, platform as a service and how we can build it. Okay, like there is a Heroku, which is very popular. Right, like, and we, we like the idea, but uh, Heroku was only hosted on Amazon, 
And there are many other like service providers that just cannot join the Heroku, like you know, with infrastructure. We said, okay, let's build Heroku for service providers. Like, and this is how Jelastic started. Then, and we discovered containers uh, because our investors had very good relations with company that uh, was one of the guys who created containers and say like system containers. Today, the um, the company is called like Virtuoso. And after I realized, okay, containers, they're super cool. Like, look, like we were working with containers from 2011. Like from 2011, before containers became cool, we were already using them because we realized, okay, they're flexible, they're scalable. We can introduce new pricing model, which is based on pay-per-use. Like, so it's open a lot of, of opportunity for us. So this is how Jelastic started. Like we build a prototype, then we cooperated with found our partners in the United States, and then we found partner in Germany. And our service were overloaded, honestly. Like so, we got a lot of attention. Like and said, okay, there's something that people like. So let's let's go commercial. And I think there's, you know, like for some people, especially, you know, obviously our user base is academics. And so, you, like, it's not necessarily developers. And so they hear these terms, platform as a service, they probably don't necessarily understand, like, they, you know, like, are you all competing with Amazon Web Services or, or, or not? And like, where do you all fit in that overall landscape? Because obviously, as you know, the hosting industry has so many different players. And I think sure. they all have a different role in a different space. You're not competing with AWS or Google Cloud Engine, maybe, although particular pieces may be so. And so I'm wondering what in the overall landscape, where does Jelastic fit in? What does platform as a service basically mean for someone who might not be as experienced or understand that lingo? Very good question. So in, in short, um, there are similarities and differences compared to Amazon, let's say. We do provide cloud platform as Amazon, right? However, we have uh, big differences. Um, you don't need to hire like DevOps team to to set, to set up complex environments and scalable environments. So Jelastic was built specifically for developers and DevOps teams that want to get rid of uh, complexity for infrastructure management. And with Amazon, you, you still have to, you know, like to hire and configure even uh, specifically if you go with infrastructure as a service level. So we move to the next level where we provision ready-to-go environments for you. We configure like complex topologies, and then we can integrate and provide like continuous integration, continuous delivery tools. We have like built-in tools, or like you can use like standard tools. And this is where, where we fit. But the best part, actually, what I like the most, that we do not provide our own infrastructure. We cooperate with partners around the world, so because there are so many great hosting service providers in the world, they they own they own data centers or they rent data centers, and they like what they do. But for them to go and compete, like or at least like you know to offer a similar service like Amazon, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of money, like so it's a lot of R and D efforts. And for us as the developers, like we like to focus on software, not on the infrastructure management. We we we, we do infrastructure management as well. But still, we prefer to cooperate with partners. And so today, we cooperate with many partners around the world in more than 40 countries already. And we help to transform more than 100 data centers. So in a short, uh, I call it decentralized network of independent cloud service providers. So and it's very good for um, customers because they can come like, from different countries and see like okay, there's a Jelastic in Brazil, like, there's a Jelastic in the United States, or there are like several Jelastic partners in Switzerland, for example. Mm -hmm. So if one of them is not working well, like there is an opportunity to migrate to another one, and, and there is a full interoperability. You don't need to redesign. There is no lock-in to one specific provider. This is what I like a lot. Like and of course, please keep in mind there are two additional differences: simplicity. It's much simpler and easier to work with Jelastic than with Amazon or with others, like, you know. And um, another one, pay per use. So maybe we will touch this later, but um, we invented very nice model where, like, you don't need to guess in advance how much resources you need to provision per specific instance. Like, and you, if you have, like, hundreds of instances, we just solve the right-sizing problem. Like, so you don't need to guess any more in advance, like, you know, just set maximum scaling limits and pay for what you use. So it's very, very advanced solution. And when customers realize the power of the solution, they love Jelastic a lot. Yeah, so well, this and that, was definitely, in, in that was definitely our experience. You know, when I first came across Jelastic, 
um, it was actually as a application that could be installed on uh, the DigitalOcean platform, you know, as, you know, right. a way to run platform as a service. And I thought, well, that's interesting. And then as I delved in more, that flexibility that you talk about, that we could run it on, you know, dedicated hardware, whether that's hosted sure. directly here in a data center or whether that's hosted by OVH or by any other platform provider um, that provides the actual infrastructure. So there was a lot of flexibility there. And we've been playing with content containers for a long time as well. Um, just here and there, there was obviously people interested in doing it because it gave way more flexibility in terms of what you could run without having to think through, well, if I want to run this particular application, I've got to install PostgreSQL, I've got to install these things, I've got to make sure they're compatible, I've got to make sure the right ports are open and all this other sure. stuff, whereas all these Docker files were showing up and it promised sure. the ability to just spin up a container and it would all be set up for you. Developers loved it, but end users loved them too. But but for our community, it wasn't necessarily going to be straightforward. They didn't know much about the command line. They didn't know much about how they would spin up a Docker container. And for us as the hosting provider, we wanted to provide a solution where if they wanted to do that, they could, but they didn't have to. How could they run something like the ghost blogging platform, like Mattermost for chat or something like that to provide sort of an open source alternative to Slack and other services? How could they do those things, but do it in a really straightforward way? And it was almost, a, it was interesting, um, you know, because I would always check the landscape and see what was out there. And I came across Jelastic right as we all went into lockdown at the start of the pandemic. And I'm, you know, I'm at the house, you know, we're, we're just doing work from my house and everything. And then I came across it, started playing with it. And it was just like, it immediately clicked for me. I felt like this is something that's easy to use. This is something that for someone like myself, who's not a developer, I could still run really advanced stuff and feel like there was a lot of a lot of flexibility there. The ability to scale was huge. There were so many benefits for us. And so we we hit the ground running and decided this could be a cloud platform for Reclaim Hosting to be able to provide so, so many benefits to our audience. Yeah, yeah definitely. That's Thank you very much for these great words. So, so it, 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 you know, like it's very good to hear for me, like, I'm happy when people say something yeah. like this. Like, yeah, de definitely. Thank you very much. But adding I mean, a little bit more, adding a little bit more. You mentioned like digital ocean. So our model also like we try to be agnostic. Like, so not to look to infrastructure, not to look to cloud. Because even like Amazon, like look, uh, we have service providers that use Amazon as well. So they get infrastructure from Amazon and they just install Elastic on top of it, and they can expand their infrastructure without investing into a lot into infrastructure. But at the end, they still offer the simplicity, this elasticity, the scalability, pay per use, and interoperability. So, and we have large customers that install Elastic on top of Barometal, install on top of Amazon, Azure, and they can deploy like on any location with, in the same way. It saves a lot of efforts at the end, like, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what we do. Yeah. I'm curious to hear from you, like, because you have a sense of the general landscape of your other Gelastic customers, the other providers that are using you all, like, and even down to like end users. And so I'm I'm curious to hear about specific use cases and things from you where you you found really like unique use cases. Obviously, for us, we've got kind of a unique one because we deal primarily in the education field. And I'm wondering right. if there are other hosting providers who have found a particular niche where running Gelastic, running a platform as a service, made a lot of sense for for reasons other than just based basic development, right? Yeah, so I hear very often this question, okay, where is your niche? Like, so where, where you're focusing? Um, but the reality is the following, like our niche is there where people develop software. Like, you know, if they need to like maintain infrastructure to deal with infrastructure, so Elastic can help. Now, if we're coming to specific directions, like, so it really depends on the service provider because service provider, um, for, uh, many of them are focusing on the different directions. It depends on them because they have own expertise and they bring own expertise. It's because it's not only about software, which is great, but still it's about services and about your expertise, how you can help your customers. And our service providers um, are focusing like on e-commerce, like right, like some of them just doing like Magento, like e-commerce stores, like and so on. Others like on WordPress, like and um, other guys like on DevOps direction, like so with even like running Kubernetes on top of Elastic. Or without Kubernetes, you can do like same stuff, like maybe even better, like you know. So, and uh, it 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 really it really depends on the expertise of service provider. I would say, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 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 I also um, 
I think, you know, like scaling is a huge thing right now. I mean, yeah. another another thing with the pandemic, right, is that like everybody got pushed online. And so all of a sudden, you know, for people who are providing services online and for people, you know, thinking back again to education, there was a big push for everybody to be online. So what platforms were going to be able to be stable when you had thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people hitting websites and things like that? We never had a good solution like that before because we ran, you know, independent servers with cPanel on them. And so there was only a finite amount of traffic traffic that you would run into. We were on DigitalOcean, mm -hmm. so it was virtualized and that was great. But if you want to expand on DigitalOcean, you have to shut the entire server down. Then you have to change some settings. You have to reboot it up. It's got to resize it, which can take up to a minute per gigabyte. And so we were finding, while it's great for everything to be virtualized, it's not so great in terms of being able to scale for larger projects and clients that we were working with. Whereas now, you know, getting a little bit at your idea of like having cloudlets and the ability for a system to be distributed across multiple environments and be able to scale scale up with the needs of whatever they're running, I think is really exciting. Yeah, scaling is one of my favorite topics, of course, like, yeah. you know, because this is actually why people are looking for clouds, you know, because if you run something small, like static website, like maybe VPS, like is good, like for you, like, or maybe shared hosting, like, but when you go to like production and with big service, um and customers are coming so you become uh, popular definitely you need something scalable otherwise like you know you just buy a lot of hardware it's not scalable you pay money right. like for yeah. you know like to get for peak peak performance and uh, scaling also i believe we found actually i know for sure we found something very unique that nobody offered before us on the market and um, it's called um, vertical scaling. Of course, people use it, but not in the way we offer. Because vertical scaling was underestimated uh, potential of vertical scaling. Because in the past, it was we didn't have big machines like you know people run a lot of actually specifically from Java world they run multiple applications inside one virtual machine. And they put like a lot of big, um, um, they, they put big limits for virtual machine, Java virtual machine. And Java virtual machine was not scalable vertically at all. So vertical scaling was not very much useful in the past. But with containers, we realized, okay, containers are elastic and you can resize them on the fly and they can, you know, give resources on the fly and, and return back to operating system. So it's a lot of powerful, you, you can build a lot of powerful things, things behind it. And machines became bigger, so range for vertical scaling is huge. And we enable this vertical scaling for customers. So today, um, if you want to get performance, maybe you don't even need a horizontal scaling. So like you just increase limits like and you go vertically and it's fine. Like, of course, it's not good for heavy ability because one instance is not highly available. But if again, like if you're talking about performance issues, it's super good. Like so. And at the end, if you combine this together with horizontal scaling, uh, your application becomes very flexible. So flexible vertically and horizontally, you become very efficient at the end. Mm -hmm. And yeah. adding, adding at the end, like third level of scalability, I call it like third level of scalability, when you can change your topology easily, like, you know, like, okay, you started from like um, one database and one application server, like you did not have load balancer before, right? Like so, but you can easily add load balancer now, so you change in third dim dimension, you change your topology now, right? Like, and then maybe you can add like cache server or like proxy SQL server, like to balance your SQL queries. Like, so we enable this elasticity in, 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 third, in three dimensions. And to your point, some, you know, there are some of these things that, that they were already out there, but they weren't easy to use. I think right back to AWS, and I think, you know, people say, well, AWS is really popular. All the big players like Netflix are using them and all that kind of thing. And you would go on there, and the idea of creating a scalable application was like, well, I mean, okay, CloudFront, uh, it's, so that's going to add a CDN, mm -hmm. but then I've got a drop this JSON file in and hope it matches up with an EC2 instance. It's it's very much made to be addressed by APIs and almost APIs only. Their GUI interfaces is almost useless. And so for someone like me, it was a non-starter. It was like, those tools are there, but it doesn't make a lot of sense. Whereas I found with the cloud platform, which Elastic, I was very easily able to say, drop a load balancer on. And now that's suddenly yeah. working because you because the software would do all the, all the work of knowing, all right, this internal IP needs to talk to this one over this 
port and everything, it plugged up all of those features and things like that. So it's really exciting. We talked to a lot of educators, uh, you know, who are running programs at their school, and they say things, going back to the idea of performance, like, well, we're going to get a big load on Saturday because we've got this conference going on site and everybody's going to be hitting the conference website or something. How can we make it work for that? But of course, they don't want to pay for the ability to do that all the other times, right? Like, you know, like Monday through Friday, nobody's going to be on this website. And so they don't want to pay for that. They want to pay for it at the time that they need it or even or even worse at the time they would say, well, we don't know when we're going to get massive amounts of traffic. You know, it could be that somebody posts a link on a website and it goes viral, or it could be that all of our students decide to wait until Sunday night to to turn in their homework and they're all hitting it at the same time, but it's all variable and they have no idea. So the idea of elastic scalability, I think, is huge for them because they don't have to concern themselves with that. They can know that they're only paying for those limits when they need them. And then when they're not, they don't have to pay for them. And it's great for us as hosting providers because then we can make use of our resources in better ways as well. I don't I don't have to sell someone on the idea of buying tons of hardware to be able to fix that one time that their website is right. going to get a lot of traffic. And I can feel good about that as well when I'm talking with customers. That's that's what customers love, honestly. Like yeah. this flexibility, easiness to to use. Like by the way, like if you go to Google and print like right sizing problem, most likely you will find my um, article about this. Like I explain like why it's difficult to you know like to guess in advance how much resources you need. Like and imagine now if you are a web agency and you host multiple customers. Like usually you have um, several containers per one environment, and you need like at least two environments, production and um, staging, like or development, right? And you have like 10, like, or maybe 20 customers, like you have many containers after, like how you can know in advance, like what is the size for a specific container of a specific customer? It's very hard to predict, like, so we call this problem like right-sizing problem. With Jelastic, this problem just does not exist because is, this is like vertical scaling. It, it's growing up and down automatically, but only vertical scaling will not work. This is why we invented and introduced pay-per-use. So this is very unique model. I will call it like cloud-native billing model. And you, you you notice now many like other big vendors now, they say like we have pay-per-use, like, you know, like for example, Amazon introduced it for um, their like Kubernetes-based service. And uh, mm -hmm. Google recently introduced for Kubernetes-based service as well. But please keep in mind, like sometimes companies want to confuse you, you know, like, and if you compare like their pay-per-use and our pay-per-use, they're different because they say like pay-per-use, but in reality, they still charge you for the requested limits for allocated resources, not for the real usage. Like, so be careful, guys. Like, so learn a little bit about this because it, it can save you a lot of money, honestly. Yeah, you see it. You see it a lot with providers, and it was the standard norm practice for the longest time. Where even if a server was shut down and it was virtualized, you still paid for all of the CPU, all right. of the memory, and you know the the yeah. infrastructure providers making bank on that because they're not having to provide that to you, to you, and it, you, the yeah. server shut down, but you're having to pay for it at the entire time. So I think that's really yeah. exciting. It makes and it just makes sense. It's a fair. It's fair to the customer. It's fair right. to the hosting provider because then we can make use of those resources with other clients and kind of distribute Correct. things more broadly. Um, I'll Correct. ask you... I'll, may, I'll may, ask... May, may, may I add something uh, about this? Sure. Because it's it's, it's, it's it's very important point. Look, like yeah. um, I like that we are in the middle between hosting service providers and then customers because like we are, we are playing like neutrality, like, you know, mm -hmm. neutral role. Like, we don't want, you know, like to our customers, you know, to pay more, like so. But we don't want our service providers to lose money as well, like so. We are in, in the middle, like so. But um, we are for fair pricing, like we fight overselling, like so because we don't like overselling, like we should customers should pay for like you know fair price for what they use. But at the end, for service providers, we simplify the work. They don't spend like efforts, okay, like how to rebalance my cluster. Like, I don't know, like, you know, like, so we have nice features for rebalancing, actually for distributing the load at the beginning. We we know where is the best place for each container at the beginning. So we call it like smart distribution. At the end, like if you want to do rebalance, there is opportunity to migrate containers in live mode without downtime or like offline mode. It's very unique functionality. So not not many container platforms actually, none other containers platform offers uh, this functionality. And um, yeah, at the end, it plays uh, good for um, hosting service providers and point customers.
That's awesome. Um, tell me, I, and of course, I'm not going to ask you to reveal any secrets, but I'm curious, what's on your roadmap? Like, what kind of things are you thinking? What comes next for you all? You've, you've, got, the, you've got the platform. I know that occasionally you're putting out new applications in there. So what kind of things are on your immediate horizon in the next year or so? Like, what kind of things are you all focusing on? So honestly speaking, uh, Jolastic is very powerful already. Like, so there are many things like, you know, people work in several years and they later realize like, is there stuff like I can still do? Like, you know, like, and uh, they are excited a lot. Um, so we polish, polish what we have. Like we want to, you know, to, to shine like every feature, like, you know, to be like super stable, like even more, but better use. Like, so user experience is one of our focuses. Of course, uh, we track demand on, on, on the market. Like, um, there is demand for Kubernetes, let's say, um, because people just write for Kubernetes at the beginning. And there is possibility to run Kubernetes top of Elastic uh, in almost in the same way as you can do on Amazon or, or like on DigitalOcean or any other um, cloud provider. However, we apply extra benefits for customers because there is pay per use. You don't need to gain like to overpay for your node. Like, because just imagine you create a cluster with five nodes. And you put like 32 gigabyte per each, like, but in reality, you use like, you know, like 30% of it. Like, so you still pay for this on Amazon and others. In Jolastic, you, you don't, you don't, like, it's, it's very good. And of course, we like multi cloud, multi region, all this, um, because like, look, recently the whole data center was burned, like, you know, fire damaged whole data center, a lot of customers. I yeah. do believe uh, customers, like with serious business, they need to have like at least two replicas, so better mm -hmm. three, like, you know, for capability for disaster recovery, because disaster recovery in this case, very easy. Like you just automatically switch to another location. And we want to simplify this um, for our customers to, um, we build ready to go packages. We started with you know, WordPress, for example, um, very soon is coming like Geo distributed WordPress cluster. We have already cluster for high ability, but it's running inside one data center. Uh, in the near future, it will be available. You just choose like multiple locations and we deploy clusters in different locations and connect, interconnect them and do synchronization replication for you. Like, you know, this load balancing uh, uh, automated, then CDN is automated, uh, then DNS um, is automated. Like, you don't need to go and jump like, oh my God, like how to configure all of this? Like, you know, many locations, like, Maybe like I will skip it like and we go we'll go with one data center like because it's too much work like I need to pay somebody like so we want to remove this and you know to give people this experience of availability by default like so this is the way where we see our in the future. Yeah, you always hope that you know that that you never have to deploy your disaster recovery plan yeah, and you, you, like, you think like amen. oh man we we tested and we hope that we don't have to do it and oh we've got the backups well where are the backups oh they're in the exact same data center just on a different server and so and and this really proved to be probably yeah. if there ever was a worst case scenario I think it was that and so yeah. it's exciting to be able to think okay well we have a solution for people we have a way for people to do that without feeling like they've got to hire a whole team of developers to rebuild build their entire product to work in some kind of new environment. They can use the tools they're already doing and doing it in a really exciting um, and easy to use way. So yeah, I think it's a really relevant example. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. We, um, we see demand for this, honestly. We, we see, we see yeah. demand, it's not just because like we have something. Yeah, but uh, when demand will actually come more when people realize, okay, it's easy now. Like, so uh, mm -hmm. why why not to spin up one more container? Even if I don't pay for resources, I don't consume. Hey, I, I wish this conversation could go on, but I think we have to go back up all our data now. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, <laughs> Every, everybody's gonna go check their deploy their uh, disaster recovery plans. <laughs> Absolutely. Exactly. I want to thank yeah. I want to thank you, Ruslan, for joining us today and talking about your thank wonderful you. product that is Gelastic. Thank, thank, you, thank you very much thank for everything you, you do. And, Tim, thanks for uh, jumping in to a Domains 21 session. I am a big fan of both of you. <laughs> Thank you very much, me. guys. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Wish Thank you. you. <laughs> nom, nom, nom.